Hi there. Now for this question, just to recap, we were told that in a manufacturing process, 25% of articles are thought to be defective. Articles are produced in batches of 20. And the manufacturer changes the production process to try to reduce the number of defective articles. She then chooses a batch at random and discovers there are three defective articles. And we're asked to test at the 5% level of significance whether or not there is evidence that the changes to the process have reduced the percentage of defective articles. State your hypothesis clearly. And this is for five marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, haven't done so already, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, I'll take you slowly through the work solution, or you might want to just fast forward to check out your methods. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Now, the first thing I'd want to do is to write down a random variable for the number of defective articles. And I'll choose X for that. Let's just say that uh, let X be the random variable. Okay, we'll just say RV for short. Random variable, and it will be the number of defective articles. I'm just going to put number of defects, okay? And uh, what type of distribution would the random variable X take on? Well, it's a discrete random variable. There's a finite number of trials, 20. You can either get success or failure. An article can be defective or not defective. And assuming that events are independent, then what we've got here is a binomial distribution. So we can say where x is distributed binomially. And the first parameter is n, which would be 20. And the second parameter is p, the probability of success. Now I'm just going to leave it as p because we're going to look at what the values of p can take. And under the null hypothesis, p would be 0.25. 25% of the articles are defective. Now what would the alternative hypothesis be? Well, to answer that question, help us understand the problem, I'm just going to draw a number line. And this is going to show the number of articles that we've got, going from 0 to 20. And if we're expecting 25% of the batch to be defective, well, the batch is 20, so 25% of 20 is a quarter of 20, which is 5. So generally, we're expecting, if that's the case, that 25% of the articles are defective, we're generally expecting some value around the 5. Sometimes we might get four, five, or six, and so on, okay? But we've seen that we've got three defective articles. And if we're expecting somewhere around the five here, where does three show up, okay? Is it outside of this kind of acceptable region, say, where the null hypothesis is 0.25, or is it lower? Okay, in other words, that the number of defective articles through these changes has been lowered and gives us three. So the alternative hypothesis, okay, is going to be that P is less than 0.25. And we'll be testing at the 5% level of significance. And we've seen that we're testing it with the fact that we've discovered that, or she's discovered, that there's three defective articles. So we'll say the observed value x is 3. And there's two ways that we can answer questions like this. And I'll show you both methods. One method is to work out what the probability of being less than or equal to 3 is. And if we find that that probability given that HO is true, turns out to be less than 5%, then 3 will be in this region here, outside this acceptable region. So in other words, if 3 turns out to be over here somewhere, then we will reject the null hypothesis. The other method is to find the critical value. Find out where this cutoff point would be. 
where we get a probability of being less than 5%. And then we can compare it to the three. So as I say, I'll run through both methods. We'll start first of all, though, where we take the method, which is the one that I generally prefer, but you know it can uh, vary from one question to the next. I'm going to reject the null hypothesis if the probability of x being less than or equal to 3, given that the null hypothesis is true, in other words, p equals 0.25, turns out to be less than or equal to 5%. In other words, as decimal, 0.05. So working out that probability, probability x is less than or equal to 3, given the null hypothesis is true, requires that we use commutative binomial probability distribution tables. And I've taken an extract from such a set of tables here, where I'll be looking for a p-value of 0.25, number of trials n is 20, and I've got my observed values here. And when I look up the probability of x being less than or equal to 3, I can see that it's 0.2252. So we get that this is equal to 0.2252. And when I compare this, this is just over 22%, it's clearly greater than the 5% that we've got here. So I'm going to just say that that's greater than 0.05. So what does that mean? Well, it means to say that 3 would be in this within this kind of red region here that I've circled. It'd be an acceptable value if the null hypothesis was 0.25. So what's happened is that despite having these changes and getting three defective articles, it's not sufficient to suggest that we've improved the uh, manufacturing process. So in summary then, I've got this, that there is insufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So the changes have not made a significant effect. Now I did say there's another way that we could look at this, and that is by looking at the critical value, trying to find out what this cutoff point would be. So let's just have a look at that method. So I'll just put here or we'll be looking at this method where I'm going to reject the null hypothesis if the probability of x being less than or equal to some particular value, which I'll call r, given that the null hypothesis is true, okay, turns out to be less than or equal to 0.5. 0 0.05, the 5%. And again, we'd need to use tables. Okay, so I'm just going to put, so from tables, we're looking for a value in this column here, which is as close as we can get, but below 5%. 0 0.0243, when x equals 1, is the biggest value we can get, which is just less than 5%, 0.05. .05. When I go to x equals 2, you can see I get just over 9% here because that probability is 0.0913. So from tables, that critical value must be 1. Okay, so we'll just say r equals 1. And when I compare the 3 to the value of 1, this value here would have to be 1. 3 clearly is greater than the 1, so again it would indicate that 3 is in this acceptable region here. So I'll just put here that the observed value x, okay, equaling 3, is greater than 1. So we'd come to the same conclusion as we had before. So I hope that's given you some idea then of the two methods that we could use for this question. Okay?